let's redefine metaverse because I want to start by that because that's so much myth around the concept and so much confusion that I think it's really important to repeat. Even with my team, I have to repeat multiple times until people get it. Yeah, so the way I like to think about the metaverse is twofold. The first part is the metaverse hasn't really happened yet. So there's no general defined definition. Most definitions you'll find about the metaverse are pretty complex to, to keep it simple. But the way I like to think about it, and if I were to give a definition to it, I think the metaverse introduces the spatial web. And what I mean by that is the internet that we know today, the one that we're talking on as we record this podcast right now, is largely 2D. It's I'm talking to you on Zoom. You know, I you can kind of get a, a awareness or sense uh, of my background and my environment, but largely only because of the 2D picture that you see. When we go into metaverse environments, you'll be able to have pass through features where I'm in a headset and I can have a mixed reality component. I can take notes in, in right here in air and you'll be able to see those and I can send those to you and you can manipulate that. And, you know, we've seen uh, re total recreation and immersion of your surroundings. So I think the Oculus um, or the MetaQuest 2, you know, if you put that headset on and you, you go into your living room, you can be literally in your living room and in the virtual recreation of that living room. And it could be anywhere you want it to be. You could be in space, you can be in an abstract environment. And this is really the first inning, but the spatial web is really thinking about, you know, what are the digital uh, destiny, what are the digital domains that we have and how can we bring them to life and kind of create this mixed reality, um, immersive viewpoint and perspective. And, I know that uh, that might be even a lot, but just think of it as the evolution of the internet as we're going beyond phones and tablets and into glasses and contact lenses and things where we'll be able to transpose information readily uh, in front of us in, in ways that we just hadn't think of. So there's a new spatial awareness that is existing and the metaverse is usually the catch all term for that. And the, so let me provoke you a bit on that because you said it still doesn't exist. But I, I would say that um, in a, some ways, let's say if you have an experience in Roblox, uh, if you have an experience in the Central Land or the, or uh, Second Life or or Sandbox or uh, all these things, in some right, ways right. it starts to happening uh, in a lot of ways. Okay, and of course, if you are in Meta, in one way you're already there, even if it's not completely in the vision that you are just described. How do you see this bridge right now? So I think the bridge between today and tomorrow is right now to use any of the metaverse experiences beyond the video games. It's still, uh, there's still some adjustments that need to be had, right? It's still not a seamless approach. Where I really feel like we're at with v VR or any of the metaverse activities that you've kind of seen is it still is pretty much a developer and a nerd and a geek uh, thing to do. And it's becoming more accessible by your general consumer. Like you can go into Target or Walmart or Amazon and buy a, a Oculus Quest 2 and you can have a standalone VR experience. But if you really want to experience the metaverse, you probably need a mixed reality headset. We're thinking, you know, Microsoft's HoloLens 2, um, the, 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 um, HTC has the index two or Val or the valve index two. Um, so you have like these headsets and what's fascinating about those headsets is they cost a lot of money. You know, they're probably three, four times the price of what you would pay for an, a meta quest two. And, you know, you still have the cords and you need a pretty powerful PC to drive that experience. But that experience is intrinsically different than what we get in the standalone option. And there's still a bridge, right? Uh, the thing that I'm most impressed by is we're going to get to a point where we go beyond the the headsets. Like the headsets are clunky. Like if you remember smartphones uh, before they were the iPhone and the Android devices that we have today, they were pretty big. They were, there was a lot of buttons that were not well designed. We used them and we enjoyed them, but they also were very limited in their capacity. 
And, you know, people that had smartphones, they had them for very specific reasons. Like you had a BlackBerry if you wanted to send emails back and forth. You had a Palm Pilot if you really wanted to have your full address book in the palm of your hand. If you had any of the Motorola offerings, it was because you kind of liked cool technology, but a lot of it was gimmicky. And I think where we're at today, it's not necessarily the video game stuff is not a gimmick, but I don't think video games are the best version of the metaverse to show people because they're not that different than what existed before. So what's awesome about Roblox is we can all go into Roblox. We can all have our experiences. You know, it is a little, it is a little young by nature as far as the audience that's there and the demographics, but it is all simultaneous. So we're all in the world and we can change and manipulate and participate in that experience together in ways that video games, you know, 10, 15 years ago, just weren't able to handle, like the technology wasn't there, the servers, the the even the processing power needed to do that just wasn't there. And so I look at it and say, like, we're on the precipice. The people that are thinking about the metaverse today will probably win in five to 10 years once this stuff becomes more uh, readily available in, in, in how we access and how we build the understandings of how to use the technology in the metaverse is is more uh, widely understood. Because I think that like you hand anyone an iPad today, a two-year-old, a 60-year-old, a 30-year-old, what's happening in that example is everyone knows kind of uh, subconsciously how to use the iPad. There's no instruction manual. People kind of figure it out. If you gave someone VR today, I don't think that they would have that same experience. There's a lot of there's a lot of trial and error. There's a lot of referencing, and it's just not at that point where it's super, super, super simple. And then VR is not the the final destination. We want to go beyond VR into XR, which is immersive reality. And then that immersive reality is where things I think get way closer to what I think the futuristic idea and domain of a metaverse is.